So today I want to look at something that's even more absurd than running a Windows VM in a container, and that's running Mac OS in a container. So this idea grew out of the VM in a container when I was working with Windows. I went to the extremes and thought about all the different kinds of operating systems that I could run in a container. So some of the more obvious candidates would be certainly Windows XP or older operating systems, maybe even something like Chrome OS and Android, which would be very useful for testing purposes. But the idea of running Mac OS did pop into my mind. Mac OS in a VM is not a new idea. There's a very vibrant community that really thrives on trying to make Mac OS run on anything other than a Mac. And it's called building a Hackintosh of some kind. And basically you build some kind of PC that doesn't use Apple branded hardware. And then you install Mac OS on it so that you can get yourself something like a Mac without having to pay for Mac. But the concept of running it in a VM gives people access to Mac OS without having to own a Mac too. And it allows them to use the same hardware they would otherwise be using for an operating system like Linux or Windows. So I started digging around about how to run Mac OS on something like Kimu or KVM. And it turns out there's a lot of different projects that have the instructions very easy to follow on how to do this. And there are also projects that did exactly what I was trying to do, and that's take Mac OS and make it run in a Docker container. Those approaches certainly do work. Now, I just wanted to tweak it a little bit and add on the flavor that I've been adding to all of my other virtualization projects. And that's basically stream the results back to a browser. And the browser then becomes my client because most of the other implementations that were using Docker are either doing X redirection, which basically means that you have to run it with a Linux desktop somewhere or an X server somewhere, or they were using something like VNC and you needed a VNC client. Well, the approach that I've been using for all these other implementations is basically just putting no VNC on a web page and then connecting that web page over WebSoxify back into the container itself that is running some kind of VNC server. Well, it turns out KVM has native support for VNC. So basically all I need to do is wire up no VNC to KVM and everything else just works. So that's exactly what I did. And so my implementation of this is a little bit lighter than some of the other ones. So I basically took one of those existing implementations that was running in KVM without a Docker context and just Dockerized it. And then from there, uh, added no VNC on top of it. So you could just log right into your uh, particular virtual machine right in the browser and then control everything with the browser as well. So I'm gonna walk through the Docker file a little bit and then I'm gonna walk through the setup and then I'll show you a booted working instance of Mac OS running inside of a container. So this is what the Docker file looks like for creating this. It's pretty straightforward. It's based on Ubuntu 22.04, and this is very similar to the one that I was using for Windows VMs. And this particular one, it has a bunch of dependencies that it installs. The main thing that is different from this one and other ones is that this is using Kimu-KVM instead of Kimu system, because for this to work, you have to mount KVM into the container as a device. Otherwise, uh, it won't work because this won't work unless hardware system virtualization is available to the container. You can't run it in a fully emulated processor. At least I wasn't able to get it to work that way. And even if it did, I don't think it would perform very well at all. Uh, it's pretty slow even with KVM uh, present. And it's using Python and, and this little utility DMG to uh, IMG, which basically converts the Apple image format into something that KVM can understand. Now, the rest of this is pretty straightforward. It's using Nginx as a reverse proxy. Uh, it's going to use no VNC as a VNC client. And then this is using supervisor D to start up all the various components, uh, including Nginx and the actual implementation of Kimu. So this is the uh, supervisor D file right here. And it's just using the supervisor D and it has basically three things that it's running. It's running WebSoxify for VNC. Uh, it's running Nginx to reverse proxy. And then this is using um, the script to start uh, OS X or Mac OS. It's basically going to download it and start it. If it's already downloaded, it doesn't try to download it again. Uh, so this particular uh, piece right here starts the script, which has a bunch of code in it that's based on a project that I'll link in the video description down below uh, that will give you a lot more detail than what this is covering here. But in any case, um, these are just parameters. It's, de it's defaulting to uh, Big Sur, uh, which is a few versions old and 128 gigs and allocation of RAM of about seven gigs there and about uh, two cores and four threads, which is a decent VM for of some things, but for this, it's, it's okay. It runs okay. It's not stellar in its performance, but works good enough just to, uh, hey, say, look, I'm running OS 10 in a Docker container type stuff. 
Um, this is the part that actually downloads Mac OS and then converts it to uh, the format that KVM can understand. And this is right. This actually creates your virtual hard disk there. And once those are created, um, everything that's else is ready to run. And um, this actually is what starts uh, Kimu and KVM in the background. So this is going to use uh, enable KVM right here. And then these are just all the parameters that get set uh, for this particular virtual machine. So it's using a USB emulated USB keyboard and tablet or mouse rather. Uh, this tells it you know, the resources it needs. And this most of all this stuff down here is just the um, the network configuration and hardware configurations for it. And then it tells it you know, what drives you need. So open cores use basically for the U EFI. And then this is for the installation media. And then this is for the install media here. And then this is for the actual boot drive and so on. So all of that to say is it's basically creating a virtual machine with all of these things set. And then with that, it will then start the virtual machine kind of in the background. So you don't have to have X present on the VM. You just have to have VNC and then VNC then uh, will uh, take over and receive the output from the, uh, the actual streams coming off of KVM. And so with that, you can then log into this just like you have me have seen me do with all of my other implementations. So let's go ahead and build this and let's start up an instance of it. So to build this, just run Docker build as uh, pretty straightforward, Docker build dash T and you can call it Mac OS or OS 10, whatever you want to call it. Um, Mac OS uh, Docker or something like that. And you can use um, dot and it'll use the local Docker file. This builds of course very quickly because it's using cached layers. But what you have that built Running this is pretty straightforward too. So basically what you need to do is you need to mount KVM as a device, and then you need to do a port forward for the UI. And so Docker run uh, is of course the start. And then we're gonna do dash dash device. And then we're going to tell it what device that we're gonna mount. So dash dev dash KVM for the device. And then we're going to say dash P for the port. Uh, and then we're gonna do 80, 81. I think I have another container running on port 8080. So I'm going to more map that from port 8081 on the host to port 8080 in the container. And that's the port that uh, Nginx is running on. And then you just tell it what container you want to use, Mac OS dash Docker. That's the container image anyway. And um, that's going to start everything running. And you should see something that looks like this once it starts. Now, uh, give it a few minutes uh, to run uh, because the first boot, it's got to download the base image. Uh, and then convert that to an uh, image format that KVM can then do. And then it's got to provision the virtual machine all in the context of that startup script. So that can take anywhere from you know a minute to five minutes, depending on the speed of your computer and the speed of your disk and the speed of your internet and all those factors. So give it a few minutes and then when you're ready, you can come back and you should be able to log into it. So once you connect, you should go to the, the port of your uh, of your actual host that's running Docker and then put in port, whatever port you create. I use 8081 and go to vnc.html. And this is currently booting uh, the operating system uh, for the installer. So uh, this should uh, start uh, with the installation process in here in just a minute. So once you see the recovery here, uh, the first thing that you wanna do to prep this is use disk utility. And disk utility is just part of the boot process. Um, now, depending on what version you're using, sometimes that's on a menu up here, uh, sometimes it's on that menu right there. In any case, you're going to have a uh, screen that looks something like this. Uh, let me see if I can get that a little bigger so it's a little easier to see here. And um, you want to basically format the largest disk here. So not that one, but uh, this one right here. This is uh, 137 gigabytes is what it's reporting in any case. We want to erase this. So we're going to come over here and click erase. And that's that's going to not only partition this disk, but it's also going to uh, format it as well. It's, it's currently unpartitioned in any case. So you can call it um, Blaze uh, VM or whatever you, know, you want to name it. And then uh, click on erase. And that will basically format and partition the disk and uh, everything will be good to go there. It's not a fully allocated disk. It's using sparse allocation. So it's not 120 you know, eight gigs on your disk, on your host disk until you fill that up with data. So uh, that's done. And now that we have that, we can uh, quit disk utility right here and uh, start the install process. So I'm gonna click uh, install the start, start the install process right here. And that's going to basically walk through 
installing, this is using Ventura on it. So uh, one of the more later versions of it and older versions would be a lighter, but you know, Ventura will work. Uh, and uh, this will walk you through the installation process for it. And it's pretty straightforward for Mac OS. Uh, you basically just pick the disc and we'll do that in just a second here. So I'm gonna agree to the license, uh, basically scroll to the bottom or you just click agree and it'll, it'll prompt you. Have you read the software license agreement? You click agree and then you choose that di disc you just created and then you click continue and then you just hurry up and wait. Now it doesn't take, mine says it's gonna take two hours and 14 minutes. It doesn't take that long on my machine. Your results may vary. It just depends on whatever you're dealing with, the kind of hardware you have, what kind of disc you have and so on about how fast it's gonna uh, install and how quickly you can be up and running. But uh, let it finish and it'll reboot a bunch and it'll do a lot of different things. But ultimately you'll get the uh, screen where you can walk through the wizard to configure it. And once you're done with that, you're up and running with Mac OS. So once you have everything set up, you should get the login screen and you can log into it. Now, um, for this particular uh, virtual machine, I, I this is the second or third time I've logged into this. So I want to uh, just talk about, you know, the kind of the usefulness of this, because truthfully, it's not something that I find to be you know, stellar performance or extremely useful for much more than just basic stuff. So uh, there seems to be some glitches in it. And, you know, for instance, if I if I launch Safari here, and I go to, let's say, blaze.net, which is my website, it kind of halfway renders it. It doesn't render this. However, if I, if I launch you know, Chrome, I install Chrome just to show you that there's something about you know this website. It looks, should look like this. And if you put it in the background, uh, you actually see it rendered. But if it's in the foreground, it doesn't. So it's something about the hacked up uh, VMware drivers that this thing is using to run the actual display that it's emulating, it just doesn't work well. So it doesn't have any 3D acceleration and doesn't have a lot of the things that are typically available on a typical Macintosh. So certain apps are not gonna work. Some of them probably wouldn't even work if you tried. So most apps though are probably gonna be okay as long as they're not real intense. So anything that would be kind of a, a productivity app like uh, maybe like Calendar or Calculator or maybe Microsoft Office or you know, like Dictionary, uh, those would all work probably okay. Uh, anything that requires sound wouldn't work or anything that's kind of graphic intense would probably uh, just die. So if you wanted to use Apple TV, for instance, that's probably not gonna work at all. If you wanted to use like Photo Booth or uh, something else like that, it's just not gonna be a good experience in any case. So there is some usefulness to this, but for most things, I just don't think it's something that I would use on a daily basis or for anything that I really cared about because it's not going to be reliable. It seems to be kind of glitchy and it does occasionally crash or lock up. So if you need a machine that's going to run Mac OS and run it well and run it reliably, just go out and get a Mac. Uh, you can pick up a Mac mini for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I know that might be a steep price for some folks, but you can also buy used Macs on eBay or other marketplaces sometimes and pick up the deal on an old Macintosh, which would probably work for a lot of things. It's probably not gonna be the greatest, uh, most uh, performant Mac that you can get, but it would certainly get you by if you needed a Mac for something. So there are some glitches to it and there's some caveats to it, but all in all, it does seem to work okay. But if you wanted something to play with that is Mac OS oriented, this is one way to do that. If you wanna play with Docker containers, this is another way to do that. It's just kind of the merger of two unlikely uh, bedfellows that are coming together to work together in something that seems like a really hacked up experience and something that just works okay, but yeah, okay, it did recover. In any case, this is the experience and this is probably what you would get. Maybe your mileage may vary, but mine has certainly uh, been one of less than stellar experiences running this particular uh, virtual machine in a Docker container. But in any case, look for other uh, implementations of, of operating systems I'm gonna be throwing into Docker containers. I definitely wanna do XP. I keep saying I'm gonna do that and I will, but I also wanna try Chrome OS and Android at some point in the future as well. So I'll be uh, publishing all of that uh, in future videos just because it's just fun. So in any case, like and subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, drop me a comment in the comment section down below, uh, do all that stuff. And as always, thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.